Hi everyone, now normally when you think of macro lenses you think of photography, but today I'm going to show you how to use a macro lens for smartphone filmmaking and narrative filmmaking. To do that I'll be using my Moment phone case and the 10 times macro lens by Moment. With that you get a microfiber drawstring pouch to put that in to keep it safe and clean, you also get a lens cap to put on the front, and you get a diffusion filter which you pop onto that lens to keep a nice even lighting for your shots, and to use this I'll be using the bayonet mount. Now the first thing that I want to talk about when it comes to using a macro lens in smartphone filmmaking is creating a focus pull. Now it's a really amazing technique to use with a macro lens because of the amount of detail that you can cover in one shot. So as you can see here with the live analytics with the A at the bottom left there that we press, it sets up the live analytics focus peaking. So that will be on the right hand side decides where the focus is of course. Now if you press the arrow after setting a focus pull, which I'll you know leave a link to film it pro playlist where I can show you how to do that, it creates that focus pull for you automatically. And you can see the green lines changing, which is the focus evolving throughout the image. Now without the green lines, you can see here much clearer in broad daylight how the detail in this wood from a fence post looks and it just creates a really dynamic shot which looks stunning. Now the number one tip that people talk about when it comes to photography of a macro lens is that lighting is everything and lighting really is everything when it comes to filmmaking as well with a macro lens. Right now the sun is coming from my right hand side where the clouds are, it's obviously the UK very cloudy today but the sun is poking through so it's lighting up more this side of the yellow deck chairs than the opposite side. So you want to be filming towards this side but if you film directly here you might be able to see there's shadows on the deck chair, so you don't want the shadows in your shot. So you've got to think about the shadows that are coming into your images as well as the direction of the light. So on this side, you can see that we're not blocking the sunlight from the subject creating shadows. We're not filming on this side, which would be into the shadows. We've actually got an angle of about 45 degrees to the actual sunlight. So you want a 45 to 90 degrees of the sunlight angle filming away from that. And that way you're going to have a nice even light with a diffusion filter hood as well here, which is going to even out those shadows. And remember that this hood on the moment macro lens is about an inch long, which is the distance you want the macro lens to your subject. So you can use that as a guide as well. And always think about, in that case, the angle of the sunlight to your subject, to you, and how you're gonna work in relation with that to avoid the shadows and make the most of the light that you have. Now with smartphone filmmaking with a macro lens, it's really important to keep that lens spotless. So right now I'm using a moment cleaning pen. On this end, you've got a smudge remover, so that's gonna get rid of uh, fingerprints, smear marks, anything like that that's on your lens and you can get that straight off the lens and keep it clean. And it's small enough that you can use it on the back part of the lens as well. Now without the back cap, because Moment doesn't provide those, you do need to keep an eye on that as well because you don't want to get kind of little marks on your lens or any kind of smear marks that will end up making the image look a little bit creamy, a little bit misty almost. And you can see the little dust particles and little marks that have come off on that as well from this shot here. Now on the other side of the pen you've got this red button which when you slide up reveals basically a paintbrush type effect. So you can just use that and just quickly get all the dust particles off the lens as well so you get both bases covered with this pen and it's a really good tool and you have to make sure that that lens is clean because obviously when you magnify the image you magnify dirt as well so make sure you keep that nice and clean. Something that's really tricky to do with smartphone filmmaking and a macro lens is creating movement within your shots. Now obviously if you're in handheld it can create a lot of bumps and movement so when I tried to use both hands sliding along the desk here to smooth it out it really didn't work too well at all. When I used my right hand on the desk and brought my left hand off the desk, it started to get a bit smoother and nicer shots, but it wasn't quite where I wanted it. Then I remembered I had an IKEA wooden phone stand. Now this smooth wooden phone stand on the smooth wooden table really creates a nice sliding effect. So I put my hands both onto this wooden stand and then used that to slide across the table after a couple of misfires there as you can see. And it created something much, much smoother than I could have done with just my hands. So use whatever you have around you, if you've got suitable surfaces and things to work with, to create a much smoother image. You can see here how much smoother that is once I use that technique. Of course, using an actual slider, like this Neewa slider, can create a really nice shot as well. Once you fix it onto there, the only issue is, is that you're trying to get that slider and your phone as close to your subjects as possible. And that can be really tricky when you're using a lot of equipment like this. So after a lot of adjusting and reframing, I managed to get a shot that really worked well. And I'm not gonna lie, this actually took quite a lot of attempts. I would say this is about my 10th attempt, but I was really happy with the result in the end. You can also use the diffusion filter hood on the macro lens to push into subjects and dirt to make it look like something's moving through it. You can also create some movement by doing a push in into a subject as well. It'll take a few attempts, but it works really well. Something that's really interesting to keep in mind is how specific the focus is when you're using a macro lens. Now, if you've got a flat subject like this, which is just a fence post, even when you're moving down, it still looks really nice and in focus and looks sharp. 
on the deck chair here, really close up. Virtually the whole shot is in focus because it's a flat surface or relatively flat. But when you've got something that's got a lot more bumps and grooves and different sort of terrains to it, like this stone, your focus can be very specific and it's going to be highlighted by the fact that everything else is going to be out of focus. So when you're doing a tracking shot, for example, of this insect, because it's along a brick and it's very bumpy and lumpy, it's almost impossible to keep that in focus. So use flat objects where you can for movement shots and try and avoid the lumpy and bumpier subjects when you want to create movement as well. Something to think about as well when using a macro lens is that you are just going to have movement in your shots if you're going completely freehand like this. So as much as you want to get really smooth footage and you can go down to slow motion with 1080p resolution, if you want the best footage you're going to want to shoot 4k which means you can't really shoot in that kind of slow motion particularly with a macro lens. So if you want to get natural shots for filmmaking the best way to do that would be to use a handheld rig. So if you want to smoothen out those kind of micro jitters from your hands into the camera, put them in something like a B-Script Pro rig or a Ulanzi rig Pro, which I've got completely different ends of the budget scale or anything in between. You put your phone in, you slot it in like that, and you've got your hands off of the phone onto the rig, which takes away some of those micro jitters. So it gives you a slightly smoother shot. So you got this with the actual handheld rig. And of course, remember, it's a macro lens. So whilst it magnifies the image, it also magnifies any hand movements and jitters. So keep that in mind as well. So this is completely handheld, hands on the phone. You can see it's slightly more jittery. So it is a technique that you'd use for any certain projects, really. But you can use this for filmmaking. It's a really good tool. And to get smoother shots, handheld rig. Lean yourself up against uh, environments like this so you can get a bit more steady shots. Anything you can do to get steadier shots with the macro lens is going to be welcome unless you want to get some quite edgy kind of shots. Something that's very good to explore as well when it comes to macro filmmaking on a smartphone is how to create a sense of depth. Now you'd be right in thinking that it must be quite tricky, but there are ways around it. So to do that, one of the ways I used was a automatic focus ball, our old friend that we learned about at the beginning of this video. And to create that sense of depth is a really interesting way to do it. You can also find things that are unusual, like this brick wall with loads of stones and glass on it. So it creates a lot of textures and that also in itself creates a sense of depth, as well as the shallow depth of field that we've got here and the blur in the background. Now glass is a very good subject to start filming through. Obviously being see-through, you can see what's behind it, so that creates a sense of depth as well. So find your focus point with your macro lens against that glass surface. And you can use this as a really good tool to maybe show someone entering from a distance, but in a blur from the background and create something really unique. Also, if you've got a subject that's like this in the wind that's kind of being blown about, you can create a sense of depth by having it come in and out of focus. So here you can see it's in focus as the wind pushes it back, it goes out of focus. And that's a really interesting, playful way to create a sense of depth of the field as well. And you can also use lighting. So you can see the spider web here, but the different lights and the dappled lighting in the background creates that sense of depth too, and the different textures and the color lights as well. Now, something that really surprised me is how useful this diffusion filter that at the moment macro lens comes with. Now, it's not only useful for diffusing light and getting rid of shadows, but it's actually also really good to stabilize your shots. Now, with a DSLR camera, it's always advised to use like a big bag of rice so that you can rest your camera with a longer lens on it. But it doesn't really work with a phone because the phone's obviously so skinny. So using this diffusion filter to rest the phone on there, and you can use obviously subjects and objects that you have around the house that works well for you. You can get really, really stable shots just using that diffusion filter on a flat surface. Now, obviously, you can use a tripod as well. It's a bit tricky to get that nice and close to the subject that you want, because obviously with a macro lens, you have to get super, super close within about an inch with this macro lens. So a tripod can sometimes make it a bit tricky. Now, if you're getting handheld shots and you don't want that shakiness that you'd normally get, which can be good, as I say, for action or edgy kind of films, you want to stabilize that because otherwise it's just no good. So using something that's around you, like this fence, something in your environment to lean against to stabilize your body will then stabilize your hands, which will then stabilize your shots. So this is night and day compared to just doing a handheld shot and using what's around you can create really nice footage. By far, one of the best ways that you can use a macro lens is for extreme close ups in reactions on someone's face and body. So, for example, you could use this for a horror film, a close up of the eye darting around, looking paranoid, looking anxious and scared or if someone's reading a book that's very important to a storyline, you can have an extreme close-up of them taking in that information and maybe being surprised by what they see and then reversing that to the book, showing the words that they've read and also suspicions, any kind of reactions that an eye can show. If you've got an annoying character, you can emphasize how annoying they're being by doing an extreme close-up of a habit they have perhaps. That's enough, that's really annoying actually. Then you can also do an extreme close-up of maybe an injury, not that this is a big injury, but you can. 
A little word of warning, this is my first test shoot that I did when I was working with the macro lens. Try and avoid filming things in windy weather, especially if they're things that aren't rooted to the ground like posts and fences. With plants and such, when it's windy, it goes all over the place and gets blown about so much that your focus very rarely stays where you want it to. So it becomes a bit of a pain in the backside to be perfectly honest. So I hope you have much better weather than we do here in the UK and you're able to get stable footage out and about. But if you don't, just try and stick to things that are really stable in the ground and you can create shots that look absolutely brilliant for filmmaking with a smartphone with a macro lens.